Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This is the Play Anywhere type of title, the crossplay, the any device version of Minecraft. It's fully released and we're taking a look at the game as of 2019. Where we are now, and uh, basically what we've got at this point. So Minecraft has grown considerably over the years. Uh, we just got a Panda and Cats update which revamps those. If you haven't played Minecraft in a while, the game is completely different. The biomes are refreshed. The oceans now have like all sorts of fish and plant life and flora and it's just stunning. Tons of new items, lots of new mobs, lots of things to do. So the heart of this experience is Xbox uh, enabled features. So we get really cool things. There's achievements to uh, unlock for your Xbox account. Uh, there's also the realms, which is kind of run through that system. We have servers, built-in servers, so you can easily access PvP games or other activities with others. There's other servers that you can throw in too if you'd like to have custom ones, the option's still there. You can easily play with your friends across any of the versions, Xbox, uh, Nintendo Switch, Virtual Reality, Pocket Edition, iOS or Android, PC, uh, everything but PlayStation consoles. And uh, aged versions of basically the 4J version of Minecraft. Uh, that aside, pretty cool, lots of things to do. We also have a full store now. The store has greatly matured uh, the scripting and the basically mod creation for add-ons, which is what they're called. They're called Minecraft add-ons. As grown greatly, we're getting amazing worlds, amazing designs, tons of new content constantly to the point I can't even keep up review-wise. They've got bundles now, so you can buy it together. This includes everything from basically maps to, to skins to texture packs to mashup packs, which change up whole worlds. Tons of content. Some content directly from Mojang, and lots of other amazing creators too, producing all sorts of great things for the game. Moving past that, uh, the store is great. I've had a lot of great experiences there, and hopefully we can show off a world or two in a bit. We're going to start by showing off the realm. So this is my realm. I, I quite love it. I worked a lot on it. But realms have grown a lot too. So you can have uh, different sizes of realms. I have a full realm review, so you can take a look at that if you want a deeper exploration into it. But basically, these are a standard world that you can uh, upload worlds to, download worlds from. It's backed up. It's saved. It's, you know, basically a, a cloud save thing that's available 24-7. People can access it at any point. You just pay for a subscription for it. And there's different tiers based on how many players you want. And you can do a lot of really cool things with them, and it's just a large world that is available to someone at any time of the day. Wow, that could have been bad if I didn't have <laughs> my uh, little wings going on there. And my cool little turtle helmet. I'm assuming there was a skeleton up there or something. But yeah, you're just kind of getting a look at the game. There's a lot of cool things you can do here. There's a feed so that you can share details and pictures and information with others. It's got an easy management system. You can see your subscription. You can control details, your backups, you can see your members who's involved, and you can have so many players involved in this. And it's just a good way to play with your friends or your family or anything like that. I like to focus on the realms because I think they're pretty cool and there's a lot you can do with them. We're going to move from that and go on to the next area. So the game does have a ton of features now. You can customize a lot of the actual video settings. We're going to go into that. Uh, you can put in a mouse and keyboard. Uh, there's controller, there's touch support. Any way you want to play or interact with Minecraft, the option is there. And it all runs actually quite well. I may think about doing a, a review on each of the different uh, sort of platforms, as to say, just to kind of show it off. But they've really done a great job on optimizing the controls and the movement and everything. Move past the profile there. And uh, you can adjust all sorts of visual things, first person, third person, that weird other viewing angle. You can switch on the fly. You can adjust your HUD. You can render clouds or leaves or you change your render distance. How much it'll load, the particle distance. Tons of unique settings available, audio settings to change how it sounds. You can manage your resources, throw in add-ons, put in packs, like the Great Lord painting pack that I created. Pretty cool. And you can see your storage, you can see how much space, 3.6 gigs, jeez, okay. Uh, everything like that, you can manage your languages, all available easily. I personally think everything in the game runs really well, it plays good, 
And it's just amazing that you can have a full crossplay experience and have people join in from any device at any time, locally, online, over the network. It's fantastic, and it's the ultimate version of Minecraft, which is great. So we're going to create a new world, just a fresh one, so we can kind of give an idea of what that's like today. So you may immediately have templates from all the maps that you've purchased and suggested ones if you want to get more. You can also make a new realm at this point. We're going to do world. So there's a couple different options. You can play survival, which is the traditional, or there's creative. There's also an adventure mode. If you have creative mode, uh, which is just for building and fast creation, uh, you are limited. You can't get achievements for Xbox. You can choose from a variety of difficulties. Again, adventure mode is for like kind of a strict setup, so whatever, don't worry about it. You can give yourself a starter chest, uh, or a starting map, a bonus chest. Uh, there's permissions for players that you can set and customize so that when people join in they don't wreck things. There's choices for how, what type of world you'd like. You can put in your seed. We'll do Gala Gala. Whatever that means. There we go. And you can choose the simulation distance. Uh, you can have coordinates on if you'd like. Friendly fire. Tons of different options that are now available that won't affect your achievement earning which is great. These are considered cheats, but you can also have them on. There's commands to choose how you'd like to uh, interact with the world. You can make it like sunny if you'd like to. Uh, you can choose multiplayer settings about how it's available, invite only, friends only, friends of friends, whatever you'd like, right? And you can choose your add-ons and your resource packs. See how easily that is available in the game. Or say I wanted a texture pack or a way to change it, but I want to show off the vanilla stuff because we are doing an actual review here. So it loads fast, it works really well on all the devices, I mean I've had this on just a ton of things and I haven't had any problems with it, and you get this crazy beautiful world. And of course, if you're having any troubles on your devices, you can adjust settings and you can tweak things and you can make it run better. I really do push the game, considering um, basically the, the distance I have it rendering, so yeah that's pretty cool. Anyway, to start I thought it'd be really neat to show off uh, survival first. So in survival, you actually need to survive. You can get killed. There's varying levels of difficulty based on how tough you want it to be. Uh, you have hearts and you have a food bar. You can see that in the center. That's kind of the UI of the game. It's very simple. It's very easy going. Uh, switch between things. You can jump up here to open up craftable. There's quick craft. There's manual crafting if you'd like to do it. Uh, you build a crafting table. And with that crafting table, you are able to actually build a wealth of new objects and items based on what you have. You can sleep through the night with beds, uh, you can build boats to go across the ocean, there's gliders you can get, they're called elytras, and just tons of things you can do, build doors, build stuff like that, we're going to show that off in creative. Uh, there's sprinting, you can breathe underwater with certain masks, and there's armor types, and there's different enemies you can fight, you see the zombie during the day, they burn up, and uh, you can swim, they've got a really cool swimming kind of animation style that works really well. I don't know if this is deep enough for it. Uh, but yeah, your character can actually swim around and there's like third person and like I mentioned earlier and I prefer first person. I think a lot of people do, but the choice is up to you and depending on what you're doing too, right? You might be doing a game mode or something. And it's just an easy way to try to survive and play and live and explore as you build new things and see what's out there in the world of Minecraft. We've got on creative right now, which is the building option. So you're able to, uh, basically in this mode, build however you'd like, create whatever you'd like. You've got all the options available. And you can take a look at all the different tools and things, just like a quick flyby. There's a breakdown if you'd like weapons or blocks. And lots of other options too. You can have different crafting setups. You can make it easier. You can have a traditional crafting or, you know, whatever you'd like. It's really cool. We're going to start by, I don't know, giving myself a trident and maybe we'll spawn something like a horse and we'll give that horse some diamond armor and maybe we'll take a couple blocks just to show off some creation we'll take a brick block and scaffolding's new so we'll do that and uh, look at for wood different types of wood we'll do uh, Ikea throw some glass windows in too maybe a, a green glass pane I think this kind of shows off the game and how it's changed a bit uh, really easily. So we've got a nice area. 
I kind of want to build on the coast. So the great thing about Minecraft is it's basically, a lot of people mention, it's like Lego, but in a video game. And that's fair to say, because I mean, you know, you just come in here and you just build. If you were in survival, you'd actually have to spend time creating the resources to get certain stuff. But in creative, you can just build away however you'd like, which is great for perhaps the younger audience if, uh, you know, they don't want anything too serious. And you also, you don't really die in creative, you know, it's just a fun way to experience things. Uh, during survival, there are things like monsters and zombies and stuff that flies in the skies and zombies come out of the water. There's a lot of neat creatures now. They've really expanded uh, the offerings in terms of the world. And I hope that they continue to add more creatures over time. Because I've always really liked the mods where you get more resources and more creatures and stuff. And I mean, it takes time to build something new and... Uh, they usually involve the community, which is really nice. But see, you can just build like a whatever sort of house you want. Tons of different color options. Uh, there's concrete, who comes in tons of different colors. Uh, the wool comes in tons of different colors. All the blocks are very seamless to use. There's lots of different block types. I'm gonna take a look at uh, stairs. We'll do. Camera. And I love the the terracotta is really neat because you can actually make pattern designs with the terracotta. So you can get stuff that's really cool. You can get stairs that I'm trying to get to, and you can like put them upside down and build like a design with them. It's pretty cool, right? There's tons of different options for building, and there's tons of different things for interacting and animals to play with and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. We're gonna get to green terracotta, and you can kind of see that you, if you do it properly, um, you can set up a design. I did not do that right. Ah, see? Uh, or it just looks really nice as different blocks. And I mean, there's a lot of work involved in actually making that kind of stuff. So that takes real time if you you know, are not like me. And then we've got this new stuff called scaffolding where you can actually like kind of go up on it. It's pretty neat. And that was with the, uh, the Panda update that was recently coming out. Uh, they're redoing the villagers in, over the year, so that should be cool. And I'm sure they'll have other planned updates as well in the future. Because they really do like to push it and try new things all the time. Got a horse. You gotta tame horses. You know what I'm doing? I'm doing it completely wrong. I actually have to uh, ride this thing. Love me. And then you give it cool armor. And you can like put a saddle on it. Which is what I need to do to make this work. Uh... My bad, as I forget how to do something simplistic in Minecraft. Go over your horse. But there's a couple different options for taming various creatures. Yeah, now I can ride it. Go, 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 and you can give them names. They have name tags. You can name your creatures. You can have things like chickens or pigs, and uh, you can mate them and breed them and do all kinds of stuff, whatever you'd like to do. Tons of different creatures. Uh, we're going to jump out of here. There's the friendly pigs, pretty cool, right? I think maybe we should show off some other uh, creatures. So you, you generally, naturally find them uh, in the wilderness. Spawn, yeah, there we go. Uh, my f favorite creatures are the, the mushrooms, but there's deadlier things. There's the creepers that people probably well know, sea pandas. We grab the, the sea, pan <laughs> sea turtles, <laughs> not sea pandas. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny though. I would get a good kick out of that. Just want to show off some of the uh, the darker, the darker characters quickly. Some of the the evil ones. Where's where's the Enderman, the Frenderman? Probably faster if I Enderman, Endermite. Yeah, just so I can show off some of the creatures that are involved in the game. So I love the mushrooms. They're just my favorite thing in the world. Uh, there's a really cool community map where they've turned everything animal-wise. It's kind of like a Mario 64 inspired thing where it's a 3D platformer kind of. Well, it's not a platform, but it's an adventure type of game. And it's turned everyone into like sticker things. Uh, so there's like all the animals are sticker type. And that's an example of what the community store can do. Well, actually, we'll show that off later. I think that makes a lot of sense. We got the creepers. They usually blow things up, so you want to have cats because they're terrified of cats. And then we got giant turtles. And they lay eggs and stuff, and I mean they're actually pretty authentic with a lot of stuff in this game. And the pandas and they, you know, they eat bamboo and they fly around and they do panda stuff. And we got skeletons. Uh, some of the mobs burn during the day, like zombies. So I'll end these skeletons. 
Kind of not nice to them. We got blazes. They shoot fire. They fly around. They're pretty cool. We got Frendermen. They steal stuff. They blink around, and you can kill them. Get under pearl, and you can teleport really fast. You're not supposed to look at their eyes, and they get all creepy and follow you around. Moving past that, uh, as you can see, Minecraft is a world of distinct environments. We get some pretty crazy-looking biomes and places to go. You can have, like, snow, and there's deserts, and there's oak forests, and there's birch forests, and there's big rocky plains, big hills. The world generation is absolutely incredible in this game. And then we also have a full breathing sort of ocean now with shipwrecks and uh, basically coral reefs and all other sorts of crazy things. You see some of the, the bad zombie guys. They're like, I think they're called husks or something. Uh, pretty wild. They might be husks. And they, might, they might have a different name. But yeah, we actually have full oceans which is great uh one of the later features of last year was the oceanic effort because that was a really bland part of the game we also got these cool tridents you can like throw or you can uh use it to sort of propel yourself i think that's yeah, just throwing it i'm not doing it right you can throw yourself really high in the air if you've got the right effects on it it's really cool uh but yeah that's generally kind of the ocean i wish i was near something that was a little bit more gorgeous because they've got some really colorful beautiful underwater things. There's dolphins and stuff too, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, underwater caves. Uh, there's now uh, buried treasure you can collect too, if you find that on maps. And there's hidden temples and jungles and other places you can go. There's some of the coral kind of going on here, you can get an idea of it. Uh, but yeah, a very expansive whole world underneath the water too, which I thought was a really good effort. I just want to do a quick fly, which is going to kill the FPS, because it's got to load. But I just want to give a sense of basically scale and environment i mean it's just endless right and that's what i picked an endless world and you can see all the different biomes and stuff to explore and the seeds change the world too the seeds like if you share a seed with a friend you get the exact same world type except when the generations change over time and it's just a very complex dynamic game filled with creatures animals and friends if you'd like oh there's a ravine pretty cool there's like strongholds you can go to the end and fight a dragon there's bosses there's like a wither and the dragon i mentioned uh, there's bad witches and uh, there's the villagers. They're going to be more distinct and biome oriented when part two of the sort of panda, I would call it the panda update, comes out. I think it's like villager and pillage or something like that. It's got a special name. And there's just a lot, a lot you can do. Oh, I think that's actually a pretty cool thing to find over there. We're going to go check that out quickly. But you get a good look at the swamp. And I just really want to give the idea that, you know, there is a lot to this game, and there's a lot to explore and kind of see. And it's just the generation is so good for the biomes. They naturally meld and move together, which is really cool. Oh, sick. I don't think I've actually personally went to one of these before. Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to have to save that for later. Hmm. Yeah, it's one of the hidden kind of secrets you can find in the big houses and stuff. And it's a full day-night cycle. Uh, you can have rain and snow, depending on the biome, and all kinds of other cool effects. We're going to jump into a custom map. So usually I'd use the one with, like, mechs to show it off, but I really do like the effort uh, with this one particular kind of world. So we're going to do that one. A Nightmare and Candy... Uh, Candy World is actually really good too, so is Lapis Lagoon. I spent a lot of time filming these. I've just kind of had uh, trouble keeping up recently. They have like mini games and mashup packs. There's just, as you can see, there's a, a ton of content. Halo themed stuff, Fallout stuff. It's just crazy. Whatever type of thing you like, they, they usually have something for it. There we go, Papercraft Adventure. This is just a great showcase of uh, what the game can do when someone is, you know, basically a content creator is putting something on this marketplace. It's wonderful what they've been able to achieve, and I feel like they're just scratching the surface. And I just wanted to really show off some of the things you can do in this. As you can see, we're in a, a vast classroom full of little dioramas and activities, but it's a completely changed experience. You could customize, uh, you know, the creators for you in these worlds. And customize the way the mobs look, what they are, the textures, fully voice acted uh, sessions, cinematics. I've seen some really crazy things with this. And it's like quest based. So you're actually trying to collect certain special stars, which is really cool. Uh, there's one right here. Oh crap, well that wasn't good, I broke it. 
but uh, you, you collect it and you get kind of points and you unlock new things. And it's just, I don't know, it's really crazy and I think this is a good demonstration of sort of what this can do or what can be done in this game. And it'll just completely change um, the experience you have when you are playing Minecraft. And it's just an easy way to do it because most of the time in the past when I played, you had to do this yourself. You had to entirely make worlds and games to play with others and now you can just kind of like you know buy them and they get them free sometimes depending on the worlds and they have special like sales and it's just a really good growing area that i like to support because it does help uh basically expand the scope of minecraft and allow us to have something that continues to grow over time i think it's really neat and this is of course just an example of it the cool little fish and stuff but I think it's a good showcase of what can be done with the game very easily and completely change you know your perspective on it and there's hundreds of worlds like this it's crazy so yeah that's Minecraft in 2019 it's looking great they're gonna add a ton of content we've got a great way to play the game whether you want to make worlds you want to join in a realm you want to play with your friends across all your devices jump in Servers to play with others, PvP, online worlds, all kinds of cool stuff is possible to play with friends. Uh, tons of settings to customize, a full store full of stuff to enjoy. And it's just, it's crazy to see how much the game has changed since they moved over to this Bedrock version, which I do definitive, like, think it is the definitive version. Definitively what Minecraft should be. Just like a, a tease, like looking at all the different uh, custom skins. You can have custom skins depending on your platform too. Uh, for your characters you can throw them in manually or you can buy them too from the store which is really nice but yeah this you know this is what minecraft is supposed to be a fun experience for everyone to join in and play together and have a wild time and i think this is also a good showcase of some of the servers so that's uh, my thoughts on the game at this point i look forward to seeing how it continues to grow with the new updates and changes over time